I'm doing illegal things. I'm filming in the car again. It's because I'm getting pumped for probably what's going to be one of my most complicated projects to date yet in terms of sewing. I am on my way to Ikea, which as you know is one of my favorite places. I have been wanting a reason to make this project, but I just like, haven't found one yet. And then I realized that I'm graduating soon and it could be my graduation dress. I took a wrong turn. What a surprise. could make a green and blue version of my purple and pink one. Apologies, this video is a little bit cryptic so far. This whole project was kind of hectic and I, I'm going to explain it to you in just a second. Basically, I have wanted to make a version of this Alame dress for a while. Alame is an Australian designer brand. They make amazing dresses. They are so luxurious and beautiful and fun and quirky and whimsical. And it's all of those things that I love, but I don't love the price tag because these dresses cost north of at least $500 a pop. Some of them are up there around the $800,000 mark. And yeah, your girl's not made of money. So I decided that I was gonna make one. But also for a while, I've had this idea that I wanted to make some sort of clothing out of an Ikea bedspread. And what better thing to do than to make the Alame dress out of an Ikea bedspread and put those th two things together. The third element is that this is going to be the dress that I'm going to wear to my graduation. That first trip to Ikea, I thought I'd given myself a lot of time. I, that was, that first trip was about a month out from my graduation. And the fact that I am raising this now in the video, it probably gives you an indication that I don't actually use the time that I gave myself. So I waited a full three and a half weeks after buying the things to actually get them out again and start on this project. The reason that I bought these particular bedspreads is for a couple of reasons. The first one, which is a name that I can't pronounce, this one starting with J, I bought that because it has these embroidered birds on it, which is really cool. I couldn't find any fabric that wasn't stupidly expensive that had this sort of embroidered bird feature. And the second reason is that basically I couldn't find fabric that I wanted to use for a decent price that had these features. I also bought this particular one because the white one is a 100% lyocell or it was like a polyester blend. It was the closest thing that I could find to like a silk linen blend that wasn't going to completely break the bank. While I didn't get the supplies out for a few weeks, I actually had been churning through the idea in my head and kind of planning which parts were going to go where and which bits of fabric I was going to use for which elements. And then I also used Photoshop to make a little sketch and again, visualize where the different fabrics were gonna end up on the different parts of the dress. I have completely stuffed up and I've left myself not enough time to get this project done. It's Saturday afternoon. I am gonna have to take a bit of a uh, make it work, Tim Gun project runway, making the cut style situation so that I can actually get this dress started and finished. So today's strategy is gonna be to cut everything out and hopefully prepare everything. Had a bit of a powwow session with mum the other night to talk through the concept and I think I've got it nailed. And then tomorrow I'm gonna to spend the rest of the day just putting it together and hopefully it all works out. Please pray to the sewing gods that this actually works out because I really want this to come to life and I want it to be cool. To start off with, I just opened up all of the bedspread covers by cutting the seams to make these lovely big flat pieces of fabric. I honestly still have so much left over, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. And then I also gathered the pieces from the different patterns I was going to use. I've just spent a lot of time on the floor over there trying to figure out how to get all the skirt bits to work. But in the meantime, I've also organized all my fabric, fabric, and put the pieces, pattern pieces that I need to cut out of each different thing as I go. I'm a little bit worried I won't have enough for the sleeve, but I'm gonna start with cutting these things out. And then as I'm cutting, I'm gonna think about how to solve the skirt sleeve situation so that I have at least a little bit of the floral on the sleeve, the white and birdy butterfly floral on the sleeve, as well as like the lower half is gonna be the navy section. So I don't know how it's gonna go, I'm just gonna see what happens and I will 
check back in with you shortly. So as I said, I went and cut out basically everything I needed except for the sleeves and bits of the bodice. In the end, I used pillowcases for the bodice and the sleeves so that I could get just enough of the floral element that's on the white fabric. And I had to compromise on the back piece. I just didn't have enough of that floral and I wasn't confident that I was gonna have enough left over for the skirt. So I just went with the plain white, which I think was fine. To get a bit of the floral on the sleeve, I cut them from the pillowcases and then I used the length and shorten line as the guide for where I was gonna add the contrast piece to the lower half of the sleeve using the navy floral fabric. I added a little bit of seam allowance to each side and then I ended up French seaming these together so that it would be all really neat and tidy and also have a little bit of weight. Everything else is cut out and ready to go, which is really excellent. I'm very proud of myself for cutting everything out, except for the interfacing, I'll do that. And it turns out that there was no placket, so I'll just have to figure that out later. I just cut some strips into like three inch wide pieces that I'm just gonna use as a placket. I keep saying placket here, but I don't actually mean placket, I mean button band. So please ignore me from here on out when I say placket, because I mean button band. Probably have to interface it. I don't know how that's gonna go figure that out when I get there because that's going to be one of the last steps to do. In the meantime, I have to figure out how to cut the skirt from the rest of this fabric. I might use this piece as a bit of a guide. I'm just going to use the sort of rectangle skirt, gathered skirt method, which I have been looking up here. I'll share the link to this, obviously, in the description of this video. And then tonight, I think I'm going to get started on stitching a couple of the simple things and getting ready with the sleeve pieces that I had to cut in two separate pieces. I think I will get as much as I can done tonight and then we'll see how I go tomorrow with figuring out the rest. I totally axed my knees the other day when I fell over running. So it's actually really hard to cut things out on the floor right now. <laughs> anyway, I want the I want these birdies to be either side of the center front. These birdies over here and this birdie on that side. So then my center front is somewhere in the middle here. I don't really know how long I want it to be, but I, but I want it to be long. So if that's gonna be like 10 inches at the bottom, then I need to figure out where, how high this needs to come. So I'm gonna do the tried and true, lie down and figure it out method. For the main part of the skirt, it is basically just a gathered skirt, but there's this contrast piece at the bottom, which I added in the floral navy color. So I had to find where the waist was gonna land plus where that additional contrast piece was going to end up at the bottom. Once I had the length correct, or thereabouts, I found the center front and carefully cut straight down the middle of that. And then I used the skirt pattern piece to give a little bit of shape to the hip out to the bottom of the skirt. For the waist portion, I basically just doubled the measurement that was on that skirt piece because I was going to gather it all down before. In my head, I had Saturday designated as cutting out day and prep day and Sunday as sewing day. So as soon as I got off on Sunday, you see I'm in my pajamas, I sat straight down at the sewing machine and started sewing. Here I am putting together the two portions of the sleeve with a French seam. Just a quick reminder that French seams are actually quite simple to do once you've done them a couple of times. Start with the wrong side spacing and then stitch some of the seam allowance and just keep that in mind. Then you trim and press and then you stitch right sides to facing together using the remainder of the seam allowance and that will give you a neatly enclosed raw edge French seam which is just really special. This is a great technique to use if you don't have an overlocker or if you think the seam might be visible. I go through these steps in way more detail in another video so I'm going to link below the exact timestamp of when you can find me run through this in a little bit more detail in the description. I've done the back and yoke section the night before and so then the next up was to do the front bodice. And frankly, at this point, I was glad to have instructions to follow because I was sewing for six hours straight before I got to this point. And it was really nice to just follow some instructions rather than make stuff up myself and use my own brain power, which was failing by this point. All of this is a total mistake that I made. I attached the skirt to the bodice when I shouldn't have. 
I actually needed to put the pockets in first before I did that. So I had to go back and fix some mistakes. I also managed to get the pockets in with the French seam as well. So well done to me. The rate at which I'm stitching demonstrates one of two things. Either I'm impatient or I'm getting overconfident. And I think that right now I'm impatient and I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to get this done. That is update. Don't have any interfacing, only scraps, which is not going to be enough for my cuffs, which is a bummer. But, oh, and the shop is also shut. The sleeves are underway. The rest of the dress is pretty much put together. The last couple of things that are a bit complicated is going to be doing the placket and making sure that the placket and the little neck band collar stand-up collar actually works together. I have no idea how I'm gonna do that. It's almost seven o'clock. I really wanna get most of this done tonight, so then tomorrow night I can just do the hem and finish off the buttons. After dinner, I powered through a lot more sewing. I skipped interfacing on the cuffs, naughty naughty, because I figured that the material was sturdy enough anyway without needing interfacing, and I just, I only had scraps left over of interfacing, and I just decided to get as much done as I could. So then Monday night after work, I only needed to do just the finishing touches. Yes. I'm trying this on for the very first time. Let's do it. I smashed some ice cream while I was brushing up on some Professor Pincushion tutorials about attaching a button band and a neck band. And then I got on to attaching a contrast piece to the bottom of the hem. I basically just cut a 10 inch wide piece of the floral contrast fabric, the navy one, and I attached uh, the side seams to connect into a big long strip and then I just whacked it on the bottom of the hem. And then that's where I caught it for the night because I was just so exhausted. Obviously by the time Monday rolled around, it was getting to crunch time. I needed some interfacing though to finish off the button band and the neck band. So on my lunch break at work, I went to the fabric store and picked up some interfacing and some thread. And then as soon as I got home from work, I started hemming the skirt. The reason I made such a wide contrast piece for the bottom is actually for two reasons. I wanted the hem to be really wide because that gives that that luxe feel. And I also wanted there to be plenty of weight at the bottom of the skirt so that it wasn't gonna to be too like poofy. And then to make sure I was top stitching in the right spot, I used masking tape on my sewing machine to mark out three inches from my needle so that I knew that all the way around my top stitching would be evenly spaced. It would just have that three inch dimension. The hem is done. Now I need to do the button band on the front and finish off the neck. Do all the buttonholes, so the buttons on. I still haven't shown you guys the buttons. Let me show you guys the buttons. Paper bag, ASMR, anyone? I got these. Aren't they so cute? I got them from the Selvage Society. I think they're gonna go really nicely on these cuffs and also down the front. I thought about doing a concealed band for the buttons and then I remembered that I had these cute buttons, so exposed band it is. I interfaced the button band and then I did some quick calculations to determine how wide it needed to be to fit within the neck band that I had cut from the Simplicity pattern. I ended up making the button band just super duper long and then I trimmed it down once I finished the hem. Ideally, it would have been better to hem after attaching the button band, but at this point, I was just doing things out of order because I wanted to get everything done. I attached the first side of the button band and then I pressed that back towards the center front. And then I folded over the other raw edge and folded over the whole thing. And then I actually slip stitched the whole thing down, which took, I don't even know how long, it took forever. Maybe like an hour and a half or two hours. I don't know. It took so, so long. 
I'm glad I did it though because it just gives a really super high quality finish to this dress. I didn't film it but then I did all the buttonholes and I started sewing on some of the buttons but I didn't get through them all before I went to bed. I think I went to bed maybe like one or two in the morning. It's almost midnight. I finished most of it. it looks so good. I just need to do the buttonholes and the buttons and then she's ready. Hoping I can be in bed by 12.30. So in the morning I got up and I got my coffee and my porridge and I stitched on the last of the buttons that needed to go on before heading off to graduation with about half an hour to spare. <laughs> I did it. I finished it. And it's 7.32. Stephanie Lee Kennedy. Naturally, on graduation day itself, I was too busy celebrating to record that much content, if any. But needless to say, I am so, so, so happy with how this dress turned out. It is exactly what I had envisioned in my mind. I honestly can't believe just how close the final product is to that Photoshop sketch that I did of the whole concept mapping out where all of the different colors were going. I have to say mission accomplished because recently I wore this dress again to a family thing and I think I overheard my sister-in-law asking someone if the dress was in fact an LMA dress. So that's definitely a winner to me because that was the ultimate goal. To wrap up this whole project, was an exercise in not spending $700 on a dress. So in, I'm gonna give you a full disclosure about how much everything cost. The two Ikea covers, the white one, I got in the king size edition, version, edition. I got in the king size version, which was $69. The navy one I got in the single bed version, which was $49. I think the buttons were $8. I can't remember how much I spent on the interfacing and the thread, but that's just kind of stash. That's not for this project itself. So I'm not going to count it. And then I spent probably two full days sewing plus that Monday night and the Tuesday morning just before the graduation. So if I calculate that all together, it is $124 plus probably, I don't know, 30 hours of my life, <laughs> which for this dress, I'm so happy because uh, it just it just turned out so well. It turned out so 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 well. So there are some links below to check out the French seam tutorial and also a not gonna lie anonymous link if you want to ask me anonymous questions. I'm gonna do a Q and A very very soon. Or you can leave a comment below or you can leave a comment on the community page where I post things regularly. If you want to stay up to date on more projects that I get around to, follow me on Instagram because that's where. I go through a little bit more of the process as these things are happening. I feel like my skills are improving and I'm really ready to like hack way more stuff together. I still find it hard to believe that I actually made this dress. Just crazy. Mm -hmm.